Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow, we love having all these people sitting in the front rows. I think this is a great, uh, great thing that we've started here. Praise God. We're so glad and blessed that Teen Challenge is with us this morning. Aren't we? Praise the Lord. in the Lord today. That's why we're here. Amen? Father, we just thank you and praise you for this glorious day. And we thank you, Lord, that it's only because of your shed blood and your atoning work that we are here at all. We give you all praise and all glory today. That's why we're here. And that Jesus would be lifted up because we praise and glorify your son, Jesus, Father, who is our Savior and our Lord. And even today, we submit and commit this service into your hands. To your glory, to your praise, and to your workings. In Jesus' name, at the Church of God, say it. Amen. Amen. Let's rise and let's praise the Lord.
you're a friend. Yeah. How many of you remember when you were not a friend? Yeah. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? I want to tell you, you know, the Lord is here. He really is. And, you know, He is so gracious and so merciful and so loving and so kind. And all the days of our lives, since we have come into that special relationship through Jesus Christ, we have come to know this glorious God in front. And I want to tell you, I, my heart rejoices every time. Amen. And I hope it's the Amen. same with you. Amen. And uh, we have a great privilege today, but uh, to have Teen Challenge with us. Praise and uh, how many of you are hat excited? <laughs> But the, as we do uh, every Sunday, I always want to give an opportunity for someone who has a, a testimony of something good that God is doing in your life or in someone else's that you just want to give thanks to the Lord. Anybody today will give you that opportunity? I have a powerful healing testimony. My hypertension was stage two, heading to stage three, which is really critical. And I want to thank God because he brought it down to normal. Thank you. Yes. But glory to the Lord, but the enemy had to get one more jab and pop a major blood vessel in my arm. Oh so I'm trusting God for that victory, too, in his healing hand. Upon it, but all to the glory of God. I was actually, my heartbeat was skipping and not pumping and beating properly. And today, come. Thank you. So Amen. all the glory to God. Amen. Glory. Amen. 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 Lord, we know that you've uh, healed so many of us, and certainly uh, in the testimony we have heard over this last uh, month or so, you have really been bringing a healing to Jan. And so, God, I pray that you complete that healing, that, uh, Lord, you cause uh, whatever it is that uh, is wrong in the eye to be corrected, yes. Lord. I pray you just uh, cause uh, out of your goodness and your great love, I pray that, Lord, you minister in Jan's life and complete that healing. And we'll give you thanks, Lord, yes. for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to, uh, Lord, 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 we're going to have more. <laughs> I get a lot of help here. <laughs> Challenge. It is nice to have you guys here with us. And I uh, just want to let everyone know that luncheon here at the church immediately following this morning's service, everyone is welcome. And uh, also Christmas Eve service, Thursday, December 24th, here at the church at 5.30. Praise God. Thank you. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. And um, the word Advent is the word that means coming or visit. In the Christian season of the Advent, we prepare for the Advent of Christ at Christmas. Our preparation includes many things. We remember Israel's hope for, coming of, for the coming of God's Messiah to save, to forgive, and to restore. We remember our hope for the second coming of Jesus. We remember our need for a Savior to save us from our sins. We prepare to welcome Christ at Christmas in our world and into our hearts. By lighting one candle each week of the Advent, we help ourselves to get ready for the birth of Jesus. I have a, a scripture that I'm going to read. It's Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will not be, it will not be like a covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant through, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. It will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more.
Dear God, we thank you for this season of Advent that helps us to prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. As we read the Bible and light the candle, my excitement for Christmas coming is burning in our hearts. Amen. Lord, we just come together this second week of Advent. And we just cry out for your help, Father. As you quicken our hearts and minds, the importance of this season and all that it means to your children, your friends. You call us your friends. And Father God, that our hearts and minds would be just filled with the joy with a relationship with Christ like we've never had before. And a love honoring you like we've never had before. As we learn your great power and grace and mercy. That you would so empower us with your love and empower us with your Holy Spirit, that you would anoint and power our hearts, our tongues, and our way, that you order the feet of the righteous in the path, and that we are in a path at this gracious, glorious time of celebration. This is the season of Christ. Lord, guide us with your word as we win the loss. This is the greatest time of the season where family and loved ones are gathered together. And put it in our spirit, in our hearts, in our home, to see all your glory in this time and in this season. And let your perfect will come into us, O Father. In all of our ways, let us have love and compassion one to another. Touch our hearts to invite someone to our home at this time and in this season. There are so many of you. And we praise and thank you for this glorious season as we celebrate the coming home. Amen. 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 Well, with uh, no further ado, it is our privilege to have you gentlemen here. Amen. Amen. And I do. Thank you guys for having us here today. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege for us. And uh, it's, it's funny how God works, huh? Yeah. Amen. Um, does anybody not know about Teen Challenge? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, <laughs> Teen Challenge is a program for men and women who struggle with addiction. Uh, you could call it a rehabilitation program. Um, but what separates us from all other rehabs is uh, what we like to call the Jesus Factor. Yes. Um, Amen. Right is by Jesus Christ's saving grace that our lives are changed and yes. he continues to use Teen Challenge as a vessel. Um, Teen Challenge um, has been, uh, well, we're, we just celebrated 50 years of changed lives. Praise God. Uh, Praise amen. Um, it's, we're in over 225 centers throughout the U.S., uh, over 1,200 worldwide. Um, Teen Challenge New England consists of eight centers, including New Jersey, yeah, so we didn't take the journey. Yes. Um, but uh, we have over 400 beds in Teen Challenge New England. Praise God. And um, yeah, uh, that's great. So a little bit about the program itself is, uh, you know, it's a 15 month long program. Every need is met. There's no discrimination. And we have a students first model. Okay. So um, you know, these guys come. These guys' needs come before mine. Uh, being a, a graduate of the program, being a practicing in the program. Um, they're, they're, always, they're always first, they're always before me. Um, <clears throat> recently we just added an uh, APEC uh, section to our program. The last three months is devoted towards uh, job training, um, interview skills, and um, resume writing classes. That's great. Yeah, it's That's awesome. Great. 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 Um, you know, uh, we, we want to see these guys equipped when they leave the program. Yeah, that's right. yeah. um, we have our transition house, which you guys are welcome to um, to stay at after they graduate the program, work their own job, pay right. Yeah, that's great. Um, and, uh, you know, God's doing wonderful things with Team Challenge. Um, you know, and, and the biggest thing that, that happens at Team Challenge is, is these men and women, and some of them have never in the past been exposed to the gospel, are being introduced to Jesus Christ, and their lives are being changed. Yes. Amen. I should attest to that. Amen. Um, so at this time, I'm going to welcome the choir up. 
And we're going to sing for you a couple songs, give a couple testimonies about what God said. <laughs> All-Star. 
sort of say. But um, <laughs> but um, when I got out of my last prison sentence, um, I got prescribed Xanax because in prison I got sentenced to be in solitary for the last eight months of my sentence. So Xanax took a whole whole new liking in my life. I just absolutely loved it, I could say. Um, I already sold drugs, so all the money that I would get from selling drugs would already go towards that. I manipulated my family when I was hurt and I was sick from it. Um, everyone in my family just thought I was, you know, I just become the addict in the family. No one really wanted to see me. My mom didn't want to see me. My sister was very disappointed in me. My only sibling, my sister. Um, my grandparents said they had rather uh, die than see me live my lifestyle. My living girlfriend left me. Yeah, she left. She packed up and left. And um, so I was um, sitting in a jail cell at one point, and um, I've been in, in Teen Challenge before in Vermont, and I had no other alternative. I was looking outside of a jail cell, I was like, ah, I don't think I can do this anymore. So I called my mother, and my mother said, you need to go back to Teen Challenge. And I was like, nah, I'm all set with that. It's 15 months long, no. It's not going down, it's not going down. I'd rather die somewhere. And she's like, mm, huh? So I called back two minutes later and I said, yeah, I'll go back to Teen Challenge. I go, sounds like a good plan. Um, but since I've come to Teen Challenge, all these brothers right here are my real brothers. I don't need a gang. I don't need no one else because I got God with me. And God's just been doing awesome things in my life. He's um, brought my mom and sister back in my life. They, kind of, they, fight, they fight on the phone to see who talks to me first. <laughs> my grandparents, my grandparents pull me aside when I go on pass and tell me how proud of they are, how proud of them, how proud of they are of me. Um, I still have no girlfriend. She still left out of the picture. Um, <laughs> um, but um, just God, God's been doing great things. Uh, I thought I wasn't good for anything now, and I thought I wasn't good for anything, but on May 27, 2015, I went to a, a courthouse in Queens. I went and I appeared at a judge. I had a warrant out for my arrest. They, um, I got brought into the courthouse. I went in with the chaplain, the pastor in the house, and um, the judge asked, where have I been? And I said, hmm? And um, they, I, I looked at them, I gave them a piece of paper saying that I've been in Teen Challenge for the past three months. And they looked at me, they, the judge looked over at the court, uh, at the DA, she talked, she was, she was just talking, I couldn't hear her really. Um, my mom and, and the pastor were out there. I, I heard the pastor praying and the, the, court, the, judge, the judge said, Xavier, I just want to congratulate you on what you're doing with your life. I sentenced you to Teen Challenge New Haven and ever since that I've been stipulated here and it's been a great, it's been great. I don't care about the stipulation. It, it was God's plan for me, me everyone here. Um, I, I'm part of the drug awareness team. I, I enjoy time with the guys there, you know. I'm, they're building me up to be the leader while I'm the leader, but they're building me up to be a better leader. Everything's a new learning experience. I got brothers like Larry, who I couldn't stand in the beginning, but now we love, so now, now, now we love each other. Like, I could honestly call on him when I need help. And all I have to say is that God is faithful. So the scripture I stand by is Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you, you need only to stand still. Exactly. Xavier came in the program, he was a sarcastic pain in my butt. <laughs> um, God has truly done a work in both mine and his life. Um, you know, he's raising him up as, as a leader, like he said, and not only a leader with position, but a leader with, uh, that leads by example. 
and he's doing a work in his life, and uh, and you know, I, I I really can call Xavier my friend now. Praise God. Um, yeah, it's all about God. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, what was I going to say next? Uh, we're going to sing another song for you. All right. And um, Jerry doesn't know he's singing the solo. Oh, dear. What for, Jerry? Thank you. 
and also learned the songs yesterday. Um, and he spent all day, uh, practice is Mondays and Tuesdays, he spent all day Saturday singing the songs and learning the songs. So um, I'd just like to give him a chance to share. He's been in the program how long now? 12 days. 12 days. Cool. Yeah. story, but it, I guess I would start it at age 12. My parents got divorced, and my mother left the house, and I had this void inside of me that I always tried to fill with the wrong things, maybe drugs, other things of that nature, and it just kept escalating, and every time I tried something new, I would just get sadder and sadder, lonelier, more distant from my family. And at a point, they, they had enough. They said, you either get help or you get out. At that time, you know, I didn't have Jesus in me, so I was doing my own thing. And it basically led me to be homeless on the street, eating at soup kitchens, sleeping out in the middle of the cold. And finally, I, I had enough. I talked to my brother Steve, who's been a Christian for, I want to say, 12 plus years now. Him and his beautiful wife and their kids. He just, he started talking to me. And I just surrendered. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he, he took me in got me through the detox process the best that he could, the way that he could. And through him and his pastor, they led me to Teen Challenge. And through Teen Challenge, I did find Christ. And I had felt a touch of the Holy Spirit in me. And it, it's amazing. I'm like, uh, like I said, I've only been here 12 days, but I feel, I feel amazing. Thank you for letting us be here today. I do appreciate that. I'm going to hand it back to Larry. Thank you. Okay, quite as smooth. Yeah. Um, the reason I had Tom come up is, you know what, I'm, I'm excited to see what God's going to do in his life. Yeah. Uh, the dedication he's showing yesterday to learning the songs um, and and just the heart that he has for it. Um, he, he's really into it and, and um, I mean, I'm sure it had something to do that he'd be standing in the front row. You might want to know the, first, the words. God takes these men not only does he redeem them, but he transforms them into something else. Yes. God has a purpose for each of these men. Yes, he does. He's got a mighty purpose. Yes, he does. We have a sponsorship opportunity. Two sponsorship opportunities, actually. One is for the holidays. A lot of these guys come in and they don't have the clothing they need. Um, we, we, every need is met. And sometimes the clothing we get doesn't exactly fit, though. Um, actually, Tom's wearing my old choir shirt right now. <laughs> um, but uh, we want, you know, if, if you guys uh, feel the need to give, we have a Christmas sponsorship where you can purchase, um, we have bookmarks for every student, purchase four items for them. Um, clothing items, shirt, pants, uh, shoes, and a sweater. Um, so please, um, it's, we're getting down to the wire here. We need a couple guys uh, sponsors, so please come see us at the table. Xavier, raise your hand. And Ryan's out in front, so Ryan, they're going to help you out, get signed up for that. Um, also, our normal sponsorship, um, if you would like to sow a seed into possibly the next pastor, um, a, a better father, um, or just, just a better man, um, we have a, uh, a sponsorship that's a dollar a day. 
thirty dollars a month, three sixty a year, save five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but please, we need we need support. Uh, we don't turn anybody away if they can afford. I came in, I had an intake fee, which is seven fifty, and then I asked for like seven fifty to a thousand a month after that. I didn't have it, um, but I I paid seven fifty, and I've been in the program for over. Um, it was it 17, almost 17 months now, and I haven't paid since then. So the doors of Teen Challenge stay open whether you can afford it or not. I'm going to hand over the service back to the pastor, allow the guys to go back to their sheets. You know, we've had the privilege to have Teen Challenge with us on a number of occasions. But, I, you know, you never get tired of hearing what God is doing in, a, in another person's life. Amen? Amen? And it really is great. It's phenomenal. I remember when the Lord saved me at a young age. I was only, uh, I was only 18 years old when the Lord saved me and uh, brought me to uh, a small church. Uh, just by way of chance, in some people's minds. But it was a work of God who brought me to a, a home uh, where I was trying to sell some goods to them and they sold me Christ. And I ended up in a little church down in Bridgeport called Bethel Assembly of God. And guess what? I'm still at Bethel Assembly of God. <laughs> Isn't that something? A lot of years passed. But uh, the Lord is always at work in our lives. I just want to uh, close our service with a few thoughts here. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Psalm 33. And I want to speak to you about finding hope in the Lord's mercy. Psalm 33, beginning to read here at verse 18, says this. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, and on those who hope in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. For our soul waits for the Lord, and He is our help, and He is our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him, because we have trusted in His holy name. And let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. Now, I have a changed life. Many of you have a changed life. These men from Teen Challenge have shared in the ways in which God has changed their life. Reaching into that place they once walked and personally reaching into their heart and drawing them into a relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. The scripture says the Lord God, the, in the original, the self-existent one, says his eye is upon all of mankind. But it is directly, it is directed with a special attention to those who fear him. In the original, that word fear expresses a two full meaning. The first is this, an attitude of deep respect for the Lord God. It's this outward manifestation of a feeling, an attitude that is inward in us to pay reverence to Him in the way we choose to live. It's a careful consideration of our actions in the sight of God and honorable reactions with others so as to reflect that respect <coughs> towards the Lord that we have in our own heart. It is a seeking of the Lord with all our heart, a keeping of His commandments, a serving of His interests, before our own, a manifestation of love towards others. 
Because God has manifested His love <coughs> towards us. These are the ways in which we pay reverence to God. And the actions in themselves are, are what are counting here. Rather, such actions give evidence that they find their source in the deep respect they have for God and the awe that accompanies it. You see, it manifests itself in gestures and expressions of reverence, a bowing of our heads as we pray, a reverent and, and quiet place of worship, a raising of our hands, a, a surrendering to the Lord, presenting our plans for the future with an if the Lord will. See, it's such a respectful attitude, but it is an attitude, the scripture says, that is tinged with awe. Awe speaks of the reverence mingled with fear. The dread that is inspired by something great. A dread that is a great fear or apprehension of danger. It expresses something more than fear, but less than terror. The fear of the Lord, the scripture says, is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Yes. Amen. It is more than being reverent. It includes a holy fear, a, a trembling. Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling, a quaking. Now I know that I love to travel, but I don't travel very much on trains, but I would imagine that every one of us have been down at a station at one time or another, standing on those platforms, and you've seen that locomotive coming. And you know, when you, you see that big diesel engine coming down, I want to tell you, you can feel the ground shake. You can sense this, there, this fear in you that has a respect for the size and the danger that can possibly be yours. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do? You kind of step back, you know. Mm -hmm. And friend, you know, sometimes that's what we need to do with the Lord. You see, that it is not just that love that causes your heart to, to just desire to do what is right. But it's more than that. It is that fear, godly fear, of the Lord who you know loves you, but you know also that He is the Almighty God of heaven and earth. And that, that fear, that godly fear, causes us at times to tremble in the presence of the one who could take our life. But Jesus said, do not fear those who kill the body. We have conditions in our world and conditions that will soon come to this country that will cause in the natural for you and I to fear. But God says, don't fear those who can destroy the body, but rather fear him who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. You see, the eye of the Lord is upon those who have reverence and awe for him, who place their hope in his mercy. Yes, Verse 22 says, and this speaks of having a consciousness of our own weakness, and sinfulness. How many of you can see that about you? Yeah. Not so many. Yeah. Just you and me. Yeah. <laughs> I look in the mirror. We are scoundrels. <laughs> I know who I was. 
You see, the eye of the Lord is upon all of us who place our hope in His mercy. But it means that we have a consciousness of our weakness and our sinfulness, our inherent sinfulness, and our inability to overcome our sinful ways. And I know that. I know that about me. And you know that about you. Amen. But even more than that, that we are conscious of our inability to overcome our sinful ways and find relief for the consequences that our sinful ways rightfully deserve. But thank God for His mercy. Thank God that His Spirit brings our hearts to that place of godly fear where the God of heaven and earth, the one who spoke and the universe was created at His Word, Lord. Yes, sir. can speak by the Spirit of God and the Word of God into our heart and bring we who are far near Amen. unto Him. And through His mercy, He looks down to those who fear Him and trust Him. And He brings them into light and truth and hope and deliverance and grace and mercy and goodness and loving kindness all the days of your life. Amen. Hope is not found in religion. Religion is man's efforts to appease God. But God was appeased only by the sacrifice of His own Son who gave His life and shed His blood on Calvary's cross that you and I might find hope. Yes. Hallelujah. Hope is the greatest, the greatest thing that God gives to you, hope in Jesus Christ. And you may be out there today, and you may look at these young men, and see the trouble and hardships that they had to suffer in their lives. But you could be a successful man or woman, going in all the right directions. But I'm here to tell you that without Christ, without Jesus, you will not know the mercy of God. That's right. And you will not know life eternal. Yes. And you will not know peace and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. When you have Jesus, you have all things. Amen. You have access to the Lord God Almighty. You have opportunity to pray and know that your prayers are heard of Him. And when you reach out and you cry out for mercy and grace for a sin in your life, you know that you know that you know that you can be forgiven and washed and made clean. Thank you. And be in right relationship with the Lord. Yes. And watch Him move in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. And provide for you. And you can never turn away. Because you cannot, in your own mind, ever come to the belief that it is not true. Once you know. Amen. It'll never go away. For all hope and all mercy is found from God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. These men may have taken a lot of wrong roads and made mistakes in their life, but I want to tell you, so have I, and so have you. Amen. Amen. That's right. And our hope is the same as theirs. Amen. Our hope is Jesus. Yes. I want to tell you, once you know Jesus, 
when you truly receive Him as your Savior. I'm not talking about knowing as in, oh, I guess I, I think He is really the Son of God. But when you know Him personally, when you enter into a born-again experience through Christ, Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Born of the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes. You see, it's the Spirit and the Word of God Amen. that brings us to truth and hope. Okay. Have you turned to Christ? Have you? If you haven't made that decision today, I encourage you to make that decision. For it is the greatest decision yes. in all of life. Amen. For with it, you will have relationship with God and forgiveness for sin. Yes. Amen. And life eternal. Without Him, you are doomed. For there's only one sacrifice for sin. Amen. And it was Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. And all our efforts, and all our good works, and all the things we can do can never, ever purchase our salvation. Only the work of Jesus Christ that counts. Yes. Have you made that choice? Have you? If you haven't made that choice, you can do that right now. You can do it right here in the service. You can do it as you watch this on television. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the answer for every problem that you have in your life. Right. Jesus is the answer to bring you into a relationship with Him and find forgiveness for your sins and the hope of eternal salvation that is only found in Him. And today's your day. Today is your day to make that commitment. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about some denomination. Churches don't say, say denominations don't say, Jesus say. Yes. Jesus say. I encourage you to, to cry out to him. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Invite him to come into your life. Ask Him to be your Savior. Give your heart and your life to Him. And commit yourself to a loving relationship with God through Jesus. Yes. And your life will never be the same. Amen. Amen. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. 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 If you're here today or maybe you're listening by TV, I want to encourage you right now, right where you are. You know God is speaking to you. I knew the day I went into that church, I knew God was speaking to me. Oh, there was people there. Maybe he was speaking to them, but I knew one thing right here in my heart, my chest was pounding. The pastor in a church I had never been before invited those who wanted to receive Christ to come to an altar and pray. I would never in my life have done any such thing but that I knew that God was touching my heart. And I went to that altar and I prayed and I asked Christ to come into my life. And I can tell you it was November 2nd, 1976. I'll always remember that day. Yes. For that is the day that I came to know Christ as Savior. And the whole course of my life changed. And that could be you. If it is you, I'm here to call you to an altar. Maybe if you're home, that altar is right there in your living room. But I would encourage you to pray. Let's, let's do that.
Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I do not come to you in the name of religion, in the name of <coughs> some church, but I come to you in the blessed name of Jesus. And I pray, O oh God, that if you are speaking into the lives of some who have been touched by the testimony of these young men, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bring them now even to a place of salvation through Christ. God, I know I was a sinner. I know I'm a sinner still. But I have been washed by the blood of the Lamb who went to Calvary <coughs> and received in his body the punishment that I deserve for my sin. And I pray, Lord, that as you washed me and cleansed me and brought me into life eternal and forgiveness for sins and relationship with you, I pray right now, today, that, Lord, everyone sitting here in this sanctuary or in your living room, I pray that right now, that, Lord, you do the same for them right where they are even now. And put the confidence of the Spirit of God and the Word of Truth in their heart to know that they know that they know that they have come to life and peace with God through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've made that decision today, then I want to encourage you to make a public confession to do so. You say, well, that's hard. Fred, it wasn't near, nearly as hard as Christ who walked up that road of the Via to Calvary. If you've never made that confession of faith and today you want to do it, then I encourage you to come right here, right now. Come right up and I'll meet you here at this altar. Amen. How many of you know you, you can stand today and say that you, you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're thankful for it? If that's so, stand up and shout about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord.